We face fears and uncertainties in life. God offers to us more hope. Welcome again to the More Hope Seminar. We're happy that you're here. We know that several of you have mentioned to us that you're learning new things from the Word of God. And we're happy for that. We hope that the Bible will also become more clear to you. So as we go through our group studies, we ask that the Holy Spirit will be there. We ask that the Holy Spirit will be our teacher. This evening, we're going to look at a very important topic. We're going to open the topic again of the Sabbath. I know many people are not aware of the Sabbath. They're missing something in their spiritual lives. And so we want to bring that, we want to open that up for you. So God bless you as you study together. Welcome back from your small groups. We hope that you enjoy these small groups. Our teachers look forward to them. And we're happy that we can study with you the Holy Scriptures in this way. Several of you have mentioned that you're learning new things and that maybe you don't understand everything yet, but we're trying to do the best that we can to help you understand, round out your knowledge of what we're hearing in the small groups. Now, in a previous study, we've seen in God's Word the Sabbath mentioned. This is sometimes a new concept for people. They don't understand what the Sabbath is. They're not sure what's being talked about. But I can assure you that the Sabbath is mentioned several times in Scripture. And we're going to take a brief survey. We're going to look at that, the times that Sabbath is mentioned. And we're also going to look at some very practical things this evening. When the Bible says to keep the Sabbath holy, what does that really mean anyway? And so we're going to look at some of those things. So first, first mention we have of the Sabbath in Scripture is that creation. It says in Genesis 2, verses 1 to 3, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. And so this verse or these verses tell us several things. Number one, it tells us who made our earth. If there's any question in your mind, the Bible answers that question. It says, The Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is. And so if you turn to the first chapter, you'll see how God created the various aspects of the creation week. You'll also see the Sabbath mentioned there because it says God set apart that day, He sanctified it, and He hallowed it because it was a holy day. He didn't say just any day. He didn't say every day. He said the seventh day was the Sabbath. Now, was God tired because he'd been creating everything? No, I don't think that's the case at all. I think God was setting up an appointment with the human race to meet with them every seventh day. And on the Sabbath, we would come together for fellowship and worship, getting to know him better. And so I believe that God had a higher purpose, really, in the Sabbath than just resting from work. But anyway, God is the only one that can do that. Can man set aside a day for holy use? No, he can't do that. He can rest, but God or man cannot make a uh, day holy. Only God can make a day holy. The next time we find the Sabbath mentioned, or another time that it's mentioned, is in Scripture in Exodus 16, verses 25 to 30. The Lord is, is leading the children out of Egypt and on their way out as you remember from the story they were getting thirsty and so you remember that Moses um, brought water out of the rock actually it was God that brought the water out of the rock but uh, Moses had to strike the rock I think he lost patience with the, the people a little bit on that day 
But anyway, the water came out and their thirst was quenched. Then they were getting hungry. They were missing, the Bible says, the flesh pots of Egypt. There was no McDonald's where they were out in the desert. So they were depending on God. They were depending on Moses to bring them something to eat. And God provided something interesting. He provided some a little kind of a little small wafer-like object. It was called manna. The word manna means what is it? And because it's what is it, the people would always say we have manna, but they were not sure what it was. So manna was provided for them. It's interesting though, interesting thing that happened when the manna came. God told them in this scripture, beginning in Exodus 16, it says, Then Moses said, Eat that for today. In other words, the manna that was provided, eat that. Because today, for today is the Sabbath. To the Lord today you'll not find it in the field six days you gather it but on the seventh day the Sabbath there will be none now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather but they found none and the Lord said to Moses how long do you refuse my commandments and my laws see the Lord has given you the Sabbath Therefore he gives you, on the sixth day, bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the Sabbath day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Here, here they were. They were provided food by God every day of the week except Sabbath. On Friday, they were provided twice as much food as they really needed. And so they were supposed to go out on Friday and gather twice as much as their family would need to consume. But we know how the story goes. Some of them went out on Sabbath and was the food there? Was the manna there? No, it was not there. As God had said, there would not be any on the Sabbath day, but there would be twice as much on Friday. If they gathered more than they needed, then... The manna would go bad. It would spoil. And so they had to look for something else or they had to wait on God. So here is another example, a good example, a perfect example of God providing food for his people. And it's interesting in this verse that we just read, it says that God said, how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws. In other words, they knew that the Sabbath was God's holy day. And so they were supposed to gather twice as much on Friday. Those that didn't, the food would spoil. Or if they didn't, they wouldn't have any. So this is the way God was teaching them that the Sabbath was holy and that it was His holy day. So we should learn the same thing. Um, I'll tell you a few, a few of those things in a few moments. Then when God gave the Ten Commandment law is another time. He said in the Ten Commandments, now the Ten Commandments were the commands written by God's own finger. I think you probably remember that. And it says in those verses about in the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We're going to talk about keeping it holy in a few moments, but they were to keep it holy and uh, they were to refrain from their work. It, it says in the verse that um, them, the, the people, their uh, sons, their daughters, their wives, their children, no one was to work on the Sabbath. And so they were to keep it holy. Now, if God thought it was important enough to put it in the Ten Commandments, don't you think it's important enough for us to give consideration to that? Don't you think we should be concerned about it? And it's interesting that the one commandment that God says, remember, people will say, ah, don't worry about that. Forget about it. Forget that old Sabbath. You don't need to worry about that. It's been done away with. It was done away with at the cross. The only problem with that, you won't find any scripture that says that. It's just what people say today about the Sabbath. So, because of that, God has given us very clear instruction. 
So when it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, please remember that's part of God's Ten Commandments. That's not some law of some church somewhere. That's God's holy law, the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. And then the Sabbath is also mentioned. It's later on in the Old, Old Testament, but it's describing what the new earth will be like. The Sabbath is mentioned in the new earth. In fact, in Psalm 66, verses 22 and 23, it says, For as a new heaven and a new earth, which I shall make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. So there, there you have it. There you have another instance of the Sabbath being mentioned. And it's in connection with the new earth. What it will be like in heaven. It says from new, one new moon to another. And what would that mean? That would mean, of course, monthly. The new moon is tied to the month. So there will be monthly meetings, evidently, of God's people. And it also goes on to say, And from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me. So evidently, we have an appointment with God that we not only keep here on this earth, but that we will keep when we get to the earth made new, or heaven. God has something special. Once you look forward to that opportunity to meet with God, and to meet with His people, those that are still alive and those that aren't, on, in the New Jerusalem. And then finally, the last one I'll mention is the Gospels. You have Jesus and His disciples. Don't you think if the Sabbath was going to be done away with or set aside, Jesus would have said something about it? Well, folks, it's not mentioned in the Bible anywhere that the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday. It's just not there. I think that we have looked at that in a previous lesson. But it says here in, in Luke 4, verse 16, So he came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, and as his custom was, remember that, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. What, did, what was Jesus' custom? It was to go to church, go to the synagogue on Sabbath, and he stood up to read. If he was the preacher that day, it would have been an excellent opportunity for Jesus to say, you know what? We're not meeting on the right day. We have now, or we're going to change the day of worship. But Jesus didn't do that. I think it's important for us to realize that the Sabbath is not a yoke of bondage. People may call it that. They say, oh, you don't need to keep the Sabbath anymore. It's simply an old yoke of bondage. It's not for you anyway. It's for the Jews. Have you ever heard people say that? That the Sabbath was made for the Jews. Well, that's not really the case. The Sabbath was in existence a couple of thousand years before there ever was a Jew. And so it's not just for the Jews. Actually, the Bible is a great gift that God has given to this planet and to this world. Have you ever gotten a great gift? Something you look forward to. I remember one Christmas as a boy, I was wanting a little bice or a bicycle. It had chrome fenders. It had red bars across. It was an interesting something that I really wanted. And my parents got it for me. I think I dropped a lot of hints what I wanted for Christmas. And they got it for me. It was a gift that they gave to me. It was something that didn't cost me anything. It was something that they did for me. So if it's a great gift... And it's still for us that are alive today. What do we, how do we keep it? When the Bible says keep it holy, what does that mean anyway? I want to give you some practical advice now in closing what this is about. Uh, and this is not to say that we all have to keep the Sabbath the same way. There's differences in how people keep the Sabbath. But think of it this way. These are ways that we can optimize the Sabbath blessing. The Bible says, from evening to evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbaths. The Sabbath starts when the sun goes down in the evening. That's the way of the Jews reckon time, from evening to evening. And we still kind of do the same thing today. We go from midnight to midnight, don't we? So the first part of the day is actually dark anyway. And then the next 
uh, day until evening is 24 hours. It says you shall celebrate your Sabbaths of solemn rest. You shall afflict your souls on the uh, ninth day of the month at evening. From evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. So from evening to evening, we have 24 hours, folks, to celebrate the Sabbath. God gave us this great gift. Now, are we a busy people? Yes, we are, especially here in the United States. And God gives us 24 hours to meet with Him, to fellowship with each other, to be with our family, be with our children. 24 hours. I love that gift. It's not a yoke of bondage at all. It is a great gift. We spend a little time, my wife does, preparing food on Friday. We have sundown worship. We clean the house. Yes, I even help her a little bit, clean the house. We put away things that distract. We turn off the, the television. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get some good programming on television. You can. But the secular things are what I'm talking about. Sometimes the paper, secular magazines. If you put those things away, you don't think about um, uh, those things so much on Sabbath. And you can put your mind into a spiritual mood. And then I want to say something else. Um, it's a good thing to go on Sabbath to worship together. Sabbath school and church. Two or three hours that we can spend together in studying God's Word like we've been doing on these uh, seminars. Some churches then have a fellowship lunch, using it to get acquainted. Sabbath afternoon is a good time to visit, spend with family and friends, do some missionary work, contact with uh, Jesus. And gentlemen, let me give you something. Probably it's not a good idea to go to the mall on Sabbath. Maybe your wife would like to go buy a new dress. But you can say, honey, it's the Sabbath. I think we can take the Sabbath off. So it gives you uh, something that uh, you can spend whole 24 hours doing. So the Sabbath affords us many opportunities, folks, to grow in Jesus. The Bible tells us to grow in our faith. So I just want to testify to you that Sabbath has been a great joy and a gift to me personally. And I hope that he will bring you great joy as you experience this great gift from the hand of our loving creator. God bless you.